Rev Sal here, chaplain at Emmanuel Anglican College. We are at uh, Bethlehem and right now we're standing in line ready to go to the um, place of the Nativity. Uh, you can see up here there's a hoop of mosaics they've just uncovered, they've been plastered over and painted over because it wasn't a fashion at the time. And, um, now they're all beautiful. Oh, and I'm the chaplain at St. Columba Anglican School. And Probably your the, name And the best club. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Hi. Naomi Cook, Rev Cook from Bishop Jewett College, and we are standing amidst people who have travelled from many places, from Mexico, from Mexico, Ra Russia, Russia, and from from Port Macquarie and Ballina and Coffs Harbour to come close to where Jesus was born, lived and died and rose again. Uh, so we're in Bethlehem. This is the birthplace of Jesus. We sat in a cave which might have been somewhat like a cave that he was born in. There's heaps of people here all wanting to get selfies. There are pilgrims everywhere here, often pushing and shoving to get to see a piece of the original manger. Today is filled with the sounds of Muslim call to worship as Christian pilgrims come to see the place that Jesus was born. Hi guys, welcome to Nazareth. If you listen carefully, you'll hear the sounds of people preparing for Christmas around us. I didn't expect that when we came here. I think of this place as being primarily Jewish, but look at this. It's a pretty epic amount of Christmas decorations here. They take it really seriously. One thing you notice in Nazareth is they have a big tree. <laughs> a beautiful nativity scene is at the base of the Christmas tree in Nazareth. <laughs> And many people stop to take their photos. But it is around an amazing array of great churches. And one of the things you notice is the tree. I think one of the biggest things that I've discovered here in Nazareth is just how much people have to live their faith. How they can't just check in and check out of it. But to be a Christian here in Nazareth is a really significant commitment. You have to make some fairly strong decisions for how you want to be. And they're incredibly generous in and among it all. I've learnt so much. Nazareth is beautiful for tourists, but it's actually a tricky place to live for the residents here. There's a clash of cultures, there's been a history of dispossession of land. Not much different to some of the political tensions 2,000 years ago when Jesus grew up here. This is where he was from being a little boy and right here, this square marks the place that an angel came to Mary to tell her she would have a baby. Apparently there's a beautiful well deep underneath the church here. And it was at that place that our church has recognized for many years, remembered that Mary said yes to being a helper in the Christmas story. We've just gone out for kanafe and uh, baklava. It's very nice. It's a very chilled vibe in the evening. Feel very safe around here, very hospitable people, very lovely place to be. In fact, Nazareth is really about the food. <laughs> Nazareth is a place where Christians gather from all around the world to pray. It is here behind this rubble of building material that a chapel has been established all the way from Calcutta from by the order of those who are part of Mother Teresa's um, brothers and sisters. They come here and they pray 24 hours a day for the world. Here's the cave that the archaeologists think is most likely the home of Mary and Joseph and the place of early worship for Christians. Here's a surprise about Nazareth. It's just as multi-faith as back home. Behind us, you can see a Muslim tower for the call to prayer, a minaret. And every morning at 5 a.m., it wakes us up. With <laughs> Loudly. With standing and saying, come and pray in Arabic. And you can also see a church steeple. This place is filled with churches. Mm -hmm. It is a religious place. Much more so than at home. But they've got this amazing ability to be incredibly respectful 
of the diversity of that, of each other's faith. So rather than mock it, they embrace it and honour it and make space for it. That's amazing. This is a desert outside Jerusalem where Jesus spent time meditating for 40 days and where he told a story about the Good Samaritan. Uh, so this is a bus where we spent a lot of our time. Naomi's sitting there. You see she has a window seat. I don't have a window seat. Sally's sitting over there. She has, she has a window seat. Where's my window seat? I don't have a window seat. These are the people we're travelling with. Spent a lot of time in this bus. Just stick him all up this time. Yes. And I get bossed around a lot by everyone. Not whinging. Here's my whinging tour of the Holy Land. I'm currently walking the route that Jesus would have walked as he entered Jerusalem for the final time. And here I am in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus prayed the night before he died. The trees here are olive trees and some of them are a thousand years old. This was the place where Jesus prayed, tradition tells us, the night before he died and prayed for it all to be made better, for it all to be taken away, and then said, but not my will, but yours be done, O oh God. He prayed and he gathered courage for the day ahead, and it was here that the soldiers came and arrested him. walking through the old city of Jerusalem late at night when some of the shops are still open but most of them are closed down. This is an ancient marketplace and just up behind me is the ancient citadel of David which used to be Herod's palace. We are walking up the stairs in a really cool section of town which we walked up yesterday but now we can't remember that. This is the old part of Jerusalem. We are walking to find a holy site. We're in a really important place called the Pool of Siloam, which was a place where people would wash themselves to get ready to go to their temple worship and also a place that's mentioned in the Gospels. It is. It's, um, it, you can feel how old it is here and we've just been through one, only about 100 metres of tunnel, but we're about to head through another really old section, very narrow. Um, but you have a real sense of time and age as you're moving through those spaces. Naomi went into Hezekiah's tunnel where it's all wet and dark. Really scary. Yeah, swimming through a tunnel, not a no, great thing. No. These are the tunnels that lie underneath the city of Jerusalem. I'm climbing through the ancient drains underneath Jerusalem that are currently being excavated. To form the steps, the steps up to the temple. We are here at the city of David. Israelis take back what they think is their land. You can just see over here their Palestinian homes, which were just over here. I can hear church bells. I can hear. Muslim call of worship, I can hear the sounds of the celebration of a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah. There are three living religions here. <laughs> Thank you. 
this is where Jesus came to the temple. This is where he taught. This is where he got really cranky at those who were buying and selling and focusing on commerce instead of on holy things. And where legend says he threw over their tables and got really mad at them. This has been an amazing trip coming to this place where religion is living and a lot and we can hear in the background the sound of a young boy going through his bar mitzvah. And then the crazy thing is, is we see a massive um, Muslim mosque right here. We see massive Jewish excavations. The, the western wall is just over there. It's a really squished in clash of cultures, clash of religions and people who are really passionate about it as well. And yet again, we're struck by the people who hold it all together and who live their faith in that incredible tension. It's just been such a privilege to be able to walk alongside for this couple of weeks. See ya. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you.